It seems like we are talking about these viral videos of people of color dealing with calls to police for ordinary non-criminal things every day. In the past few days, stories surfaced about Native American students attending a college tour reported by a suspicious parent. A black grad student who fell asleep in a common area in her dorm reported by a white fellow grad student. And a group of friends who were detained by police while they were checking out of their Airbnb rental reported by a white neighbor uh, of the homeowner. And the Airbnb guests and their lawyer are calling on Rialto police to hold the caller accountable. Joining me now to discuss, filmmaker Kelly Fife Marshall, activist and filmmaker Denisha Prendergast, and artist Komi Olafemihan, and their attorney Jasmine Rand. Good to have all of you with us uh, this morning. Thank you. Good, good to be with this morning. Uh, so, Denisha, first let's start here. This was uh, last Monday, April 30th. You were checking out of this Airbnb, and it seemed, you know, pretty normal, packing things up. And then what happened? Wow. <laughs> And then out of nowhere, police cars swooped down on us from before, in front of us and behind us. Um, it was kind of surreal. And you too. didn't know that anything was out of the ordinary until the police car showed up? No, we, we can't say anything was out of the ordinary. When, when I came out, we were packing our vehicle and Kelly indicated to me, she said, you know, look over that lady over there. And the lady was standing on her front lawn looking over at us with her hand akimbo and her hand to her phone. And she said, you know, she's probably going to call the police. And I kind of just scoffed at it and went back inside hmm. because why would she, you know? And so said, so done. The, the reality is we were black people in a white neighborhood and that was enough to now call when the you, police. When you say that uh, she was probably going to call the police and you asked why, we do have actually sound... Uh, released by the Rialto Police Department. An officer went to her and she said that she was scared and here's the explanation from her why she was scared. Let's listen. Oh, well, I walked out here and, you know, just to check the mail and I see these strange people coming and going back and forth, you know, with luggage and I didn't recognize them. What, what made you think they were strange? Um, because they had luggage in their hand and they weren't really looking at me. Mm -hmm. You know, they just kind of avoided me or they didn't wave, you know, like neighbors. And I noticed uh, the couple that uh, were in there that owned the house and I didn't recognize them. Now, that might have been a little difficult to hear, Comey. I, I, I assume you've heard it before when the police released it. She said that uh, they didn't wave, you know, like neighbors. What's, what's your reaction to that from that homeowner? Um, well, I, before before Comey starts, I want to make something very clear that Go ahead, Jasmine, you yeah. know this this is only a, a part of the video footage that has been released. We look forward to receiving the full 911 tapes, which we have not received yet, mm -hmm. that we requested over a week ago um, from the Rialto Police Department. The other thing that I want to make very clear is that the police officers arrived on the scene and actually informed them that this neighbor called and reported that there were three black people stealing stuff. Now, if that's not what this woman said, then that's a real disconnect. It's actually a lie on behalf of the Rialto Police Department, and, and that goes more to the, the mindset of those officers. Yeah, that's also included in the recordings. Uh, you can hear the officer right. explaining to uh, the, the three here. And, and Comey, your reaction to what you hear from this, this neighbor? I, I don't know how to react to that. She said we look strange, and I don't know what about us was strange. Um, if I was in my neighborhood and I saw someone coming out of a house with luggage, I would not automatically suspect that they were stealing. So that is my response to that. That is the first time I'm actually hearing that. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah. Ke Kelly, you said, and I'm going to read this here because I want to quote you um, accurately. At first we joked about the misunderstanding and took photos and videos along the way. About 20 minutes into this misunderstanding, it escalated almost instantly. What escalated? And tell me about that switchover. Um, so before, it felt like um, we felt like we were going to be able to go, um, but the sergeant came. And so once the sergeant came, um, the, mood, the mood and the energy changed completely. Um, he didn't believe anything we were saying. He didn't believe the Airbnb app that we'd shown. He didn't believe... The, the landlord that we had called and, and the picture um, we were shown, he, they, they called the, uh, the landlord and got a DMV picture and they showed it to us and we all agreed, yeah, that's her. And the sergeant said, but of course they would say that. And so at that point, it just felt like it, we were, yeah, everything was against us. 
Jasmine, I, I read that you said that this woman who made this call to police needs to be held accountable. What does that look like? What does that mean? Well, there's under uh, California statute, there is a mechanism where if somebody places a, a false call to the police or makes false allegations that, that leads to this type of criminal investigation and detainment and a violation of constitutional rights, they can certainly do an investigation into this woman and hold her accountable. Now, it's not reasonable to see four people and one of them is right, but you only perceive three of those people to be suspicious and those people all have black skin. You know, to me, the same thing that made them suspicious to this neighbor is the same thing that made Trayvon Martin suspicious to George Zimmerman. And that's wrong, and that can't continue to happen in our nation. Now, what's your response to those online? Because this is, as you know, blowing up on social media. Right. Um, who say that this woman saw someone across the street at a house where she knew the owners, she knew the couple that lived there, did mm -hmm. not recognize the people coming out, and she, even if it's based on some... Uh, prejudice or some belief about black people. She knowingly did not call about black people. Specifically, she was calling about, I don't know these people coming out and they're not speaking to me. I think, well, first of all, um, if, if I can answer that question, go ahead. Jasmine, I think I would have hoped that she would have called her neighbor hmm. first. Why didn't she just call the neighbor before she called the police? Why was her, her first intention to call the police. What did she want to happen? And why was the protocol to respond in the manner that they did? Is that something standard? And if it is, then that concerns us because how much money was spent within those few moments? Yeah. How much time was spent when they could have been doing something better, actually serving and protecting the community? I didn't feel served or protected in those moments. Jasmine. And and, and, and why didn't she wave to them? That's a great question that nobody has asked. Why didn't you wave to them first and see if they waved back? Why do you expect black people to wave at you at your behest so that you feel secure? Her, her position is completely unreasonable. And to the people out there on social media, you know, I refuse to have them ask my clients to apologize because it is a blessing that they're alive today to speak about this. And they have a responsibility to protect other people's rights. These, these are not... these. Every single one of my clients is an activist in their own right. And what we're doing right now is attempting to protect other black people who may come into that neighborhood and that area from these same police officers and from that same racist mentality. So they will not apologize to anybody for being alive. They will not apologize for not being another Michael Brown, for mm -hmm. not being another Trayvon Martin, for being here to tell their story and to tell it in their own voice. I've only got two minutes left, and Comey, let me come to you. Um, what does accountability for the police department look like for you? Accountability for the police department would be, first of all, releasing the 911 tapes. That's hearing about that. And uh, secondly, I think, based off of the call, the amount of force that, uh, that they came in to, to come get us for whatever reason, I think that needs to be addressed. I think that needs to be addressed because when, once you get that much force on, a, on, a, on, a, on innocent people, if they do not have the courage to speak out at that very moment, their lives may be in danger. And I think that is something that, uh, that the government needs to look at and the police force needs to, needs to look at as well. And Kelly, to you, uh, in the intro to this, we talked about how many of these videos we're seeing online at Starbucks and Yale and LA Fitness and on and on. What do you think the, the residence is and what do you want people who at least claim they didn't know that these things were happening to black people uh, on a, a pretty regular basis. What do you want people to do? What should the reaction be? Um, to be allies and to step up for people if you see it's happening and so we can stop the discrimination that's happening. I feel like everyone has a part in stopping this. Um, and just learning that, that there's no such thing as being suspicious. You can't be suspicious because of the color of your skin. And so being able to step up um, and for us, a big thing was documenting it. And so being able to document these situations help us a lot. All right. And finally, to you, Jasmine, um, yeah. you, you are obviously their lawyer now. Have you filed any suits? Uh, is there a suit coming? We have not filed a lawsuit yet. What we want is, is what Comey said. We want the 911 tapes. We want all of the evidence released to us so I can um, review the evidence and determine the extent to which these constitutional rights have been violated. Um, you know, the, the mayor has already issued a letter of apology. She sent a, a letter of apology yeah. to them saying she's sorry that this happened while they were in her city. And what I want to know is why the, the police department haven't done the same thing and why they've chosen instead to align themselves with a woman that they know so little about, the homeowner. Hmm. And, you know, they've positioned themselves next to this homeowner. And 
haven't even done their research. So I welcome them to continue doing that because when the public sees who this woman is, All if right. they do a summary look at her social media, they're going to see exactly who this woman is. All right, Jasmine, Denisha, Kelly, Comey, thank you all for being with us this morning. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very you. much.